Hello, and welcome to A Librarian History. The librarian I chose to speak about is Margaret Alexander Edwards, and her focus was the young adult literature. Her beginning, October 23rd, 1902. Margaret Alexander Edwards was born in a small farming town called Childress, Texas, which is a location with liter literary advantages. She was the daughter of Claude Evlon and Hedina Cruz Alexander. The beginning of reading. Her parents, both former school teachers, not only protected her from the evil world, but also provided what reading materials they could afford to their isolated surroundings. Sets of Dickens, Scott, and other classic authors, and of course a copy of the King James Version of the Bible, due to their religious. Finding her love of reading, Edwards confessed that it was not until after graduating from a college in Wachachi and teaching in Vernon, Texas, that she began to trust her own response to the instincts in literature, to question the provincial attitudes from her hometown and to admit that the work could and should challenge her own beliefs, and to accept that a literary introduction to diverse characters that she might encounter in life. Now her life as a teacher teacher of English and Latin in public schools in Forney, Texas, Vernon, Texas, and Townsend, Maryland, in 1923 until 1932. Following a two-year teaching stint, Margaret Edwards went to Columbia University for her master's degree. After graduation, she began teaching Latin in Townsend, Maryland, where her career was abruptly terminated after she offered a few ill-chosen words of free advice to an unappreciative supervisor. Now, the beginning of her librarianship. In 1932, at the age of 30, in the depths of the Depression, Edwards began searching for another job unnoticed on the door of the Enoch Pratt Free Library, announcing an examination for entry to its training class attracted her attention. She was initially assigned to the reference department, but by the end of the school year um, began her supervisor, Wheeler, transfer her over to the popular library and the circulation department under Pauline McCauley. It housed readable fiction and nonfiction for adults as well as a small collection of adult books that young people ages 14 to 20 might enjoy. YA Collection Development This marathon reading binge lasted over several years, gave Edwards the confidence to establish special young adult collections in Baltimore branches of libraries. But typically of her approach, Edwards did not merely order books reflecting her own tastes. Instead, she solicited suggestions and recommendations from teachers and others to form a balanced core. Book Talks Edwards was determined to instill in young people the importance of a public library, its reading resources, and the approachability of its staff. One way of doing so was to take her work outside of the library into schools using book talks. As a means of relaying the message to high school students, though she did not invent book talks, she and other young adult staff members tailored them so they would provide each class of students they visited with lists, calling speaking books, and allowing students to ask questions and openly discuss titles from the list. Her origins with the ALA. In 1935, she received an invitation to serve as secretary of the Young People's Reading Roundtable of the American Library Association. To continue on, she was a prolific author. She believed young people deserved nothing less than the best trained librarians, and she penned a book that would set the tone for the training in the best-selling The Fair Gardens and the Swarm of Beasts, first published in 1969. Some additional accolades. In 1940, she became the chairperson of the Young People's Reading Roundtable. Her service from 1942 to 1944 as secretary of the Division of Libraries for Children and Young People led her to election. In 1947, to the ALA Council. And in 1949, she continued a council and also sat on the board of the division. Nor did she neglect her uh, state organization. In 1949, she was in installed as vice president of the Maryland Library Association and in 1950 president. In a weak moment, she agreed to edit and publication Maryland Libraries from 1955 to 1956. Some of the legacies that she ended up keeping after she passed away, one was a uh, part of the YALSA, 
the Margaret A. Edwards Award was established in 1988 in honor of the author, as well as a spe- specific body of his or her work for significant and lasting contribution to young adult literature. The annual award is administered by YALSA and sponsored by School Library Journal Magazine. It recognizes an author work to help adolescents become aware of themselves and addressing questions about their role and importance in relationship society and in the world. Her legacy with the book for the beast. The Margaret A. Edwards Trust provided seed money for the first book of the beast conference. Since then, the conference has been self-sustaining. The conference brings librarians, teachers, and lovers of a young adult literature and young people together in a day-long celebration of reading and discussing books for the swarm of the beast that Mrs. Edwards so skillfully championed. In 1993, the conference began in a popular practice of inviting up to 50 teen readers to participate free of charge as a way of including their important insights on what had been written about and for young people. The afternoon panels had featured teens and librarians discussing their favorite teen novels, editors explaining the trends in young adult literature. Finally, the legacy of the Alex Awards. The award was sponsored by the Margaret A. Edwards Trust. Edwards pioneered young adult library services and worked for many years at the Encott Pratt Library in Baltimore. The Alex Edwards Award are named after Edwards, who was called Alex by her friends. And these are my sources about uh, Margaret Edwards. Thank you so much.